uh, we use that uses a, um, a kind of cool JavaScript uh, library called uh, D3. Yeah, sorry. Now D3 is is like this really uh, amazing library that sort of it applies physics to uh, uh, to elements on the page, and, uh, and it's a very DOM oriented, and and kind of a way that you can make this degrade quite easily uh, because it is basically this is like all to do with style sheets. So uh, something like this actually is very uh, very low bandwidth. Uh, I can look at this on a on a, uh, uh, a smartphone in you know, in sort of low uh, marginal conditions, and it, it still it still kind of works. And uh, and this this we made we started this about three years ago. Uh, it's a project called Offshore, and uh, this we made with a Canadian filmmaker. She's uh, um, has done a number of films about climate change, and uh, and this uh, climate change from the, the point of view of the oil. Uh, uh, the oil industry, and and this was actually uh, um, inspired. She had a vis uh, She visited the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, I guess about a year, two years after uh, Deepwater Horizon, uh, and uh, uh, and this was actually somebody said you need to go down there and see what's going on. And part of the part of the shock for Brenda was uh, that the world had moved on, but the problems had stayed there. That there was still Still, not only was the plume still happening, like, uh, it, although ev uh, everybody, you know, from the government downwards, is saying it's everything's fixed, it's cool, uh, um, uh, let's move on. That was still happening, but the most important part was that the uh, the health impact of, of what had happened there, in terms of, of not only oil but the, the methods they used to uh, clean uh, or try to clean the oil, which was these dispersants. Uh, and the effect that they had on people and, and wildlife and people. And then uh, the other, uh, other main thing too is the absolute non-accountability of, 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 of British of, uh, BP. They're like the cigarette company. They can't admit that they were wrong. And they will never apologize. They will never, uh, they will never acknowledge that they were in, in the wrong. And and this is they can't because it's it's just it's too huge, and and so what and also what happened too is after after uh, the U.S. government put a, a moratorium on selling uh, or leasing uh, leasing lots in in that area of, of the Gulf of Mexico. But a year later, they said, oh, you know, everything's cool, back to business, and they went back to business twice as hard. And things have changed a little bit because of the price of oil, but uh, anyways, uh, that. <laughs> That's what uh, was sort of the basis of offshore. We made offshore as 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 like this interactive kind of like immersive uh, uh, way of of going through it an imaginary oil rig because we couldn't actually be on a real oil rig because British Petroleum <laughs> wouldn't let us do that. But um, what we did uh, this is like like two and a half three years old uh, initially. But then we was asked um, the Bergen. Uh, uh, festival. Uh, they have a film festival in Bergen that's uh, this Friday. Uh, back in the summer, I said, you know, we'd like to show offshore. I said, well, offshore is kind of old. Uh, and, uh, but uh, what if we did this as a VR piece? And so the guys, yeah, that would be, that'd be cool. So, but what I wanted to do was to make it as a, a web VR piece because my initial reticence with, uh, with VR is that it's a very sort of location specific. It's, uh, you mentioned like expensive uh, high-end high -end, uh, uh, equipment to show this. I mean, this VR is like something you need to go to a fe festival. You need to, uh, uh, it's, it's a very non-inclusive kind of like the opposite of what, what I think people should be making interactive things like they should be on the browser, yeah, they should be accessible. They should be for as many people as possible, barring the fact that, of course, we're making these beautiful high-end experiences of big bandwidth. But here, um, so you doing our our web VR? So you, we're not obviously not looking. But this is this is uh, this is meant uh, the, the way this will be experienced in Bergen is through uh, through an Oculus. Um, but it's still it's it's this is uh, I would like the the, the main. Thing which will be done this Friday is is for cardboard. So I, oh, I should turn on. I, I turn up the sound. Sorry. Hang on a second. So let me go back here. Hang on. 
and do we have okay So what we had to do was we sort of pulled apart all the uh, the kind of the web the web uh, the web parts, and so we had all these videos. This is uh, the film the films that Brendan and and uh, and her partner Glenn had made. They're kind of embedded into this this uh, this kind of 2D kind of space. So we we thought, well, actually, wouldn't it be cool if actually we can't go back and and do these as 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 VR pieces? But now we're we experience this as if we're in a, a theater. So you have to imagine <laughs> looking at this as, 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 a, as a VR piece. But I think it's actually kind of cool seeing it as, as a stereo. And then, highly dramatic. And, uh, but then the cool thing is, um, is this still works as as a uh, as a web experience? Yeah, it it actually works surprisingly uh, surprisingly well. Uh, here, just let me turn the audio off uh, um, because it's it's WebGL. So, uh, so Andro Android's actually. Like this, you know, this Android handles it amazingly well. iOS 8, surprise, uh, now that they do WebGL, uh, works quite well. Uh, the one thing you do is to dumb down the, uh, the video um, quite a bit. But because, actually, we rely mostly on still images for this, uh, there is some sort of video stuff here I'll show you. that we do, uh, so Some of our transitions um, we did as, as, uh, as video pieces. So, so this is... Uh, and this is this is actually super terrifying. The first time I did this it was like I was going to die. But <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's uh, I, I think something like this actually works quite well in 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 the cardboard. Um, the other thing too is that it's it's a bit more it's a bit more sort of uh, forward and backwards as well uh, uh, because of and this was the initial part of the uh, the project as well, sort of more gaming. We didn't realize we were actually making sort of a game until we, somebody told us this is a game. But still, the idea is that, that each, uh, as you see here, I'm going to back into VR mode here, uh, each one of these hotspots, uh, so you look at the hotspot and then, I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. But it's, so you, do, you def do definitely get this idea of that you can travel through this, you can get lost, and uh, you know, different. Uh, there's there's a more of more of a lateral uh, a lateral feel to it. How do you make choices when you're using hardware where you're Choices by looking at something. So this so so you see this this crosshair. That's your central point. It's a little bit more it's a little bit more visible. Yeah. But then then you can um, Yeah. Yeah, and and it gives you like I think you've got like five seconds of, of five seconds sort of roll up, and uh, what we'd like to, I think for our next project is to use Leap. Uh, they actually Leap Leap comes with a, a sort of aftermarket clip-on thing so that you can uh, you can use your hands. I'm not too sure of that. I'd like to see actually how. So I think there's something in undignified. Um, to me, actually, <laughs> that's the big thing about VR is so undignified in the first place. Just there and like. Uh, but <laughs> once you've tried it, it is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty addicting. Um, but I, I think it's going to be one step further uh, doing shit with your hands. But um, and and the the other thing too that there's really like about using web VR versus uh, something like Unity or or Unreal is that there's much more sort of a collage nature. Like we can pull in like this is this right here is sort of. Uh, sort of a mix of, uh, we use actually something crazy, it's, it's a, a, a thing, it's a German program called KR Panel, 
which is like people do sort of hotel walkthroughs and like real estate kind of things. With that's sort of like the main engine, but it works it works really quite well for doing this uh, for as a as a sort of VR uh, stereo splitter. But then we can also put in these 3D objects, which is 3JS, uh, the WebGL uh, stuff. So that that kind of adds like a, a whole other nice aspect and the ability to uh, for us to make the, uh, uh, the the 360 video and and the uh, uh, and there's the flat video. It kind of all kind of gets nicely collaged. Fun, at least, and it's quick to do. Like uh, it's, this is like several weeks worth of work. So. And, yeah. So if you have data on, I'm really interested in interacting with online, like who's watching it or how long people are watching it, what people are watching, and who's comfortable with data, what's not comfortable with it, is it something that's trended, is that some of the information, I just find it very interesting in terms of patterns, it's so different. Well, the interesting thing is public funding, when you say, you think the NFB um, would be a bit, bit more generous with their, uh, their web stats, but they're not. They're actually like a state secret. Uh, <laughs> and so I, uh, um, uh, and it's, it's sort of projects like this that, um, I mean, it's just a matter of asking. Um, uh, and I'd, I'd say you're foolish. I mean, I think Google Analytics is, is one of the, the best thing that Google has actually ever made. Google Analytics is like amazing. And I think that that actually does tell you so much, so, so much about, uh, about things like here, for instance, going from here to um, something we've, this is kind of a big, big flap in Canada. Uh, so this is another form of filmmaking and this is, this is in support of a film. So it's, uh, um, it's, a, it's a book uh, Naomi Klein uh, wrote last year uh, called This Changes Everything. And, uh, and then the movie, uh, her husband has uh, directed called This Changes Everything. And, <laughs> and, and, and it was always this agonizing part of like, what, what is the interactive component? What is the, the actually online part? This Changes Everything going to be? Yeah, to making something cool. Realized actually everything that we tried to do was like so, so futile and small and puny as compared to what really needs to be done. So the idea was, and this was Naomi's idea, to make, uh, was to take all the ideas from the book and put it into a, like a manifesto and engage uh, right now. Uh, it's just like uh, uh, push towards Canadians and trying to get um, all Canadians, or as many as possible, um, uh, from rich and famous to, uh, uh, to people just in their, their, uh, in their living room. And how this is, this is an ongoing project, because we're super, fascinated with the stats on this. So uh, like exactly how long do people stay? And what is, what is the conversion? Like all, we try to take all the, uh, uh, I'm sure some people in this room are much more up on their, uh, their digital marketing uh, than I am, but uh, conversion, very simple thing is that you'd be given a task from, from a, uh, a click through to, uh, to the experience to what is it they? What is it you want them to do? In this case, sign, sign the petition, uh, and become part of the manifesto. And uh, so we, you know, we sort of look at all this, the, the funneling, uh, where are they coming from? And uh, but perversely, for this, actually, our our goal is to actually minimize the time that people spend on the site. And and this is uh, <laughs> this is sort of harkening back to. Uh, uh, design, uh, design, uh, more sort of commercial design. If you're, if you're, if you're selling tickets, online tickets, like Expedia, for instance, you want to make sure that the distance between somebody, t uh, time, uh, t time delta from landing on the page to buying your tickets is as small as possible. So this is this is this is what the whole idea too of, of of this changes everything and the leak manifesto is pretty much is to uh, to get people. Uh, to get people through the site as quickly as possible, because really, uh, if if you're sitting if you're sitting in front of a computer, you're not uh, taking action, and that's what the story is. So there's. What's that? That will be this Friday. I I still have to. Uh, 
Uh, it actually has to come out. Uh, <laughs> it's premiering at, at, at Bergen, so uh, I was kind of jumping the gun by showing, but uh, Friday. Uh, there's a flat version. The ordinary version is, is online. You can see that from our, our website. But uh, if you want to see the, the original uh, interactive piece, the web piece, that, that's uh, offshore-interactive.com. Inter offshore and this one will be called vr.offshoreinteractive.com. So we're pretty organized that way. Um, I think where you've just actually put a uh, put your finger on on sort of like the biggest bug bugbear of of interactive uh, narrative or storytelling or documentary is that documentary itself is so marginalized to begin with, and then you take it one step further and saying, well, you can have to watch this on your computer, small screen, and and maybe it might not work. <laughs> so, uh, so, but it's it's not it's not so much an art crowd as as I think it's just a. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's like film, uh, film people. You know, people that watch documentary films end up watching uh, interactive documentaries. And did, what's our? Uh, yeah, there's no general like landing page for like all these films. Like there's no like somebody promoting all of these as one sort of. Oh, you mean like a Docflix or? Um, well, I guess there would be. Uh, all Yeah, I think um, if you go to, I think MIT has, has like an amazing resource, Gawk Lab from MIT has, their, their, their thing is to sort of collect or curate like a, a large collection of, of, of what they think are awesome, awesome storytelling experiences. Uh, if you check that out, there's like, uh, I think close to several, 200 there now. And that goes back to like people have been making these since like uh, the early 2000s. And uh, um, then there's uh, DNFB has like their stuff. Uh, NFB Interactive has their stuff all online. But there's this, and I think there's, I mean, this is so wide ranging, getting into a whole other can, can of worms. But I think the biggest part is that it's, um, nobody's actually figured out what the commodity for these, how to com commodify the, uh, uh, this as a, as a platform or a medium. It's just, it's too all over the place. And in terms of like a film, you can sell. You can, you can put seats in a theater. It's something that's quite easily, uh, uh, quite easily, uh, you know, this, if you take it to a festival, you know, you can market it. These things, there's, the return on investment is, uh, <laughs> like our business plan is we will take your money, do something cool with it, and, you know, that's about it. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I I think is really define what 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 interactivity is. Uh, I think Netflix is is uh, I I I think that it does like an amazing job. I to me that's still something I find interactive, like in a very simple simplistic level. It's like on demand. It does you know I I can watch what I want when I want and how much or whatever. Um, yeah, well, see, that's, I, th I think that that's, the jury's still out on that, and uh, I think there's a lot more, uh, a lot more work to be done before that's actually uh, 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 something that is, is, is an art. You know, it's like, uh, 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 like, I think it was Norm, um, sorry, uh, uh, Marshall McLuhan once said something that, that, uh, uh, that uh, a new medium is, uh, is intrinsically broken. And 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 uh, and when it becomes actually something that that works, it becomes art, and and uh, and therefore uh, it's sort of solidified. You know, it's like a flying aspect. And and I think a lot of this stuff that I'm showing you, these these are ex experiments. They're they're not, you know, even the finished ones, even the ones that we've done and, and people like, uh, aren't really I don't think finished art forms. They're still experiments. Yeah.
mean, it, impact is, that's, that is the, uh, uh, that's, a, that's sort of like the, the preoccupation for this year, next year, you know, should be forever. Uh, I think impact is, is, is hugely vital. I mean, it's, and that's more, I think, than looking at web stats and stuff like that. Uh, and I think that you need to also consider what, wh how the story is made and, and what the story is. I, I know there are some breakthroughs, uh, I, I believe, something like the Ant Project, as, you know, that has, that is, is uh, like successful in terms of, of, of getting the word out, out there. Um, uh, we did a project last year with the International Red Cross uh, and in Europe, and, and that, was, uh, that was by WebDoc standards huge. Um, and so it's just, I mean, you choose your platform. Within the platform, you choose what you want to say and how you say it. And, and I think, too, is that what we're going through here is like when you see all these pictures, you know, these projects I show, like Worldwide Telescope and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the offshore VR and, and, and uh, talking about WebGL and stuff like that. I think that these, these are sort of, I think we're living a golden age of sorts that we're still allowed to do stuff like this and we still can get money to do things like this. It's like, but it's also age, the golden age of, uh, you know, like back in the day, you know, when you first, like, heavier than air flight was balloons, you know, and balloons were beautiful and they went up in the air and then they exploded, <laughs> rained down in the air, and, uh, rained down to the ground in flames. That's, we still, that still happens. So, um, uh, I think we should take advantage of, of like, the, uh, uh, of the ability to, to make what we want. Not, you know, I think impact is, is, is hugely important, but not to fret about it too much. I mean, I, I think, I think we still need to have like a stable platform to have, to have impact. So, did that make sense or was that just frivolous, do you think? But, but here's, here's, but here's, here's the thing I think yeah. that, that where there's a will, there's a way. Like, a, uh, uh, I mean, in terms of budgets, like our, uh, the budget that we work with uh, for Kipu, I mean, it's, this is not, not going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, see, I don't drive, so I'm not going to buy a Lamborghini anyways, but uh, uh, like it's $30,000. You know, and this, this, uh, this is, um, this is, for our world is, uh, and for the fact that I'll be working on this like for a year, it's not very much much money, but it's something that that we can make sustainable, and and that's sustainable for for the for the project. It's something that can be afforded. Um, it, there's there's no need, I, I think, for for spending a huge amount huge amount of money on 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 these things. I, I think it's it's our our idea is to is 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 to not go through them quickly, but to make them, you know, to make them sustainable, to, to control the scope, to, uh, uh, to make them work. So that, so like, for instance, like two years ago, it was a, uh, in Canada, there was a huge, like this was like a huge mega project, interactive mega project, this is like much ballyhooed um, collaboration between the NFB and Arte and, and this, this thing called Fort McMoney. And Fort McMoney was like this epic, epic thing and it cost a million dollars, which in our world, I'm sure everybody's world is fuck a lot of money, right? <laughs> and it was, it, it failed. And it failed because, because it, it, uh, it was still an experiment. And it, it, to me it was an experiment that went, you know, went wrong. And so when you push this in front, the idea is you sort of push this in front of like a mass audience, the ones who aren't, you know, willing to come here and, 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 and sit and listen to somebody ramble on about WebVR, uh, <laughs> uh, this was people that were seriously confused and 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 kind of upset. You know, what is this thing? Why are they showing this? This is, this is not what I want to see. So uh, I think there's, like I say, there's still some more work that needs to be done before before uh, before the uh, the prime time. I think. Here is. 
something that came out on the Washington Post. And this, this actually speaks to, I think, something that's interesting and happening now, and I think this is a, a, a really good direction that the medium is taking, one of which is convergence on, on, a, uh, on who's making these pieces and where they end up in terms of, of, uh, of, a, uh, of a landscape a platform. And so this piece, this piece uh, came to us, um, uh, the Andy, the Andy, uh, the, uh, uh, Andy Grace, the filmmaker uh, from Tuscaloosa, had seen our work in, uh, in the New York Times, had, had, had co-produced uh, the short history of High Rise. And so he, it was kind of interesting for us too as a filmmaker, seeing something uh, that was digital, interactive, put out by newspaper, and, and he said, I, this is something I want to do, and uh, this is what we made, and, and eventually this came out on a, another newspaper, the Washington Post. But these pieces now, now live in the same world that you can be, New York Times, the uh, uh, Washington Post or the Guardian, uh, you are now sort of uh, dealing in the same world as the NFB, as PBS, uh, as, as radio stations, uh, TV stations, uh, filmmakers, all built in the same, this, I think, same environment. And so the, the end result is something that, that actually is not that much uh, different from, so it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a newspaper, or whether you're a radio station, or whether you're a TV station, or whether you're, you're a broadcaster, of any sort, you, the, the work is, is still interactive. So the cool thing also about this project is that um, uh, we never actually met Andy and until Tuscaloosa the project was long done. The last week of April, so the, um, uh, uh, the I'm gonna turn this, turn this volume off here. James but uh, uh, this, this was kind of like a, a really important part too of this project is it's super, super dense and complicated and, uh, uh, and it was all done through, through Skype and, uh, and Google Docs. So, um, so we would, we talked, we would talk at least once a week and sort of share items on, on Google Docs. We used a spreadsheet and that was a script and uh, um, we sort of developed this thing called uh, just-in-time filmmaking which yeah. <laughs> uh, sort of like this, uh, this, this idea that, um, uh, that we had the rawest, the barest outline of a story and that we'd kind of make it up as we went along. And uh, uh, so at the end, end, of, end, of, end of the whole thing is this like, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because you should see it yourself online, but it's this like really tightly woven, uh, intimate and, 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 and uh, really um, kind of, I don't know, I sort of hate to use the word myself, but it is sort of compelling, I think. And that Andy is a great storyteller. Yeah? Quick question. Does um, the Washington Post portrait you at all on this? Or they just no, the no. <laughs> no, you find actually, see, and this is the other thing, too, you got to realize, is that your, your, your distribution partners that you do deal with, that's all they do. And actually, uh, they're, uh, they're um, in this case, they're, they're uh, it kind of actually almost like being on a label. It's like, oh, now we're, we're signed to a major label. It's great. They're going to do everything for us. But that actually is not the case. Like, you still have to, any of the promotions, the stuff that we did, uh, and it's pushing the piece, something we did. Uh, and that's even the case with the NFB. So, like, uh, all, the, all the, the pieces that are on, uh, being put out by the NFB, one of which actually is, uh, uh, will be this, this weekend, uh, uh, goes, uh, I think, in this building. Harry Belafonte, you mentioned, mm -hmm. will be here on the panel for uh, an NFB piece uh, called The Deeper They Bury Me, which is, uh, is an adaptation of, of, a, of a film called Her uh, Herman's House, um, the director Inga Bala. And what's sort of interesting about that is a piece Inga is, has done. He's, he's, he's the, still the person that gets on the email, gets on the Twitter, gets on the Facebook, gets pushing, 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 pushing. He's the one who, uh, who does all the... Uh, all the outreach and Washington Post zero. Huh? I was going to say people want to see your stuff, but I hear they also want to sign their films to outreach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's you know it's beautifully designed and there's always so many different elements. I was just wondering if you had a sense from all the stuff you've done, what elements people spend the most time on? Because you know, you like to have the videos and you have like say an offshore, you have those that, that section of video game. Mm -hmm. So far on the web platform that people tend to most engage 
I think, you know, the, I hate to say this, but I think linear experiences are, are strangely the thing that people come back to. And this is bit uh, linear. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, yeah, I think so that actually act like that. And so this was like a, like a surprising thing for us for, uh, for after the storm, is that this is probably one of the least interactive things we've done in a long time. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's something that, that uh, it's an afterthought, uh, how, how you travel through this, this piece. And, and it really it doesn't, you know, it doesn't actually need those, those, uh, those prompts, those stops. And uh, we sort of put them in because that's what we do. <laughs> but, um, but to watch, like I, uh, I got to see uh, this at Sheffield, headed in, um, when, in its purest form, its best form is in the tablet. And, 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 and it's sort of nice because people sit down, they can sit and they can just, just, uh, just, just glide through it. And so things like that and short history high rise was, was kind of interesting too because most if not any, everybody went this way through, through the experience, but nobody went this way. And, and that was, that was sort of like, you know, cats like, you know, Eureka moment saying, I've finally figured out how to make interactive, nonlinear, blah, blah, blah. But uh, because it's going to go this way and it's going to go this way. But people were more interested in going this way. Um, and, uh, but I think the thing is that if you take, uh, I haven't given up yet, I guess, with the idea of, of non-linearity. Non but I do think that, uh, um, that if you give people like the, the choice to, to navigate, the more choices you give them, the more that they might just choose to split. Okay. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily now. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> why not? Okay. Um, I'm up for. I'm up for some fun. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have to remind. This is this is Mike's computer, so you remind me to log out after. Okay. Um, um, but here, and it really depends on what you're asking people to do. See, I, I think this is the other thing too, is that, uh, and that's, we, I know we're we're still figuring that part out. Um, is the actual ask. And if the ask is like super, super simple, and this is something like the BBC found out like a number of years ago, because always before that, you, I'm sure you've seen it before, it's sort of these interaction design things. There's the pyramid, right? There's the 99, 9, and then 1%. It's 99% of people do, do uh, sorry, 98% of people do nothing or, or are underachievers in, on, in the interactive, on your interactivity landscape. 9% actually do some of what you want, and then the 1% is a super user. But that's, I think the BBC did a bunch of studies on interactivity, and they found out that's actually a bit of a simpl oversimplified and actually not right, uh, and that you actually do get, depending on what the ask is, you can get actually full, full engagement, what you, need, what you need to happen. It's like 60 to 70%, which is like a lot different than, than that, that 1% who does what you need it to do. Uh, the report I read, I think this was like more of like, a, it was actually strange enough from like uh, sort of 20, like why, it's like 25 to like 60. And because they weren't actually so much interested in, and they found actually that digital, what's considered digital literacy doesn't necessarily actually apply to sort of like the ability to engage. And, but you also have to define what engagement was. Like uh, they also went as far as saying, well, photo sharing. Sharing photos is like an act of interactivity, but you know if you do look at it this way, and uh, photo sharing sites or you know like Facebook, you hugely successful at, at engaging people and, and making super users out of us all. But um, like for instance, here's uh, Leap Manifesto. That's just what I showed you. This is a very simple ask, and and so these are these are from. Uh, oh, I guess, I mean, really, this is, this is from uh, last week. So you can see, I mean, this, the, and, the, and we're actually dealing with Canadian uh, 
everything Canadian, just that you uh, need to, to translate into American, add another zero at the end. <laughs> <laughs> one tenth the size. <laughs> Our economy is one tenth the size. Everything's one tenth smaller. Uh, so, uh, or what, uh, one tenth of the size. So, uh, so we're actually quite happy with numbers like like seventy three thousand over the course of, of five days. So, uh, that that works. But then you see, this is where we look uh, at sort of like the. Um, at so the conversion, because now we know, we we know that we have we have 23,000 uh, 23, people that have actually signed uh, on the uh, digitally signed the uh, the petition. So that uh, if we take a look at 73 versus 23, so that that our conversion thing is like le uh, higher than uh, it's like well less than one and uh, well, whatever it's it's better than one in, uh, one in four. Are signing this, so this 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 to us is is something that we can point as as a, as as a, a success, and uh, uh, and then like our average session duration, this is perfect for us, uh, two two and a half minutes, like that's you've like timed it out because the uh, manifesto itself is super long, but it's it's bullet pointed down to sort of fifteen main main points, and uh, which is takes about mm, two minutes two minutes to read, so. People are reading it, and then they're taking 30 seconds to sign it. So that's 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 sort of that's cool for us. Um, then let me see. Uh, this uh, offshore. So now you see this is diff this is called the long tail. So, because offshore has not been out uh, for a long time, then this is what happens to uh, 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 to interactive documentaries when they get a little bit old. So now you see that instead of our seventy-three thousand, we have eight hundred and fifty-three uh, users who are spending. Actually, not so bad. Like, but this is what I was trying to say for uh, four and a, and a half, well, five minutes on on the site. Yeah. yeah. But then, what's that? Yeah. But then this is actually kind of nice. So if you think of it in sort of more humanistic terms, so this is a month. You imagine like having a room or a film studio, uh, you know, a theater. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you're just a little theater, and you actually had 800 people come in through the course of that that month. Then, then uh, uh, not so bad, you know. And. Uh, um, so why do you take the bell for the general? What's that? Um, possibly because this uh, uh, this is not quite as political as the other one. Like the other one, I think, is and it it also t um, I guess sorry no that's the wrong thing to say. I think that that the other one is gets pushed out a lot more into uh, uh, it's marketed a lot more. Like I was going to show you, um, we did a um, a project. Uh, um, where is it? Oh yeah. Okay. So So you see here. Okay. So what was interesting about this this project cuz when it when it actually happened um, this this disaster disaster resilience journal we did with the Red Cross. This was uh, this had a lot of sort of grassroots Red Cross support and they have like an amazing network and we, these were like amazing numbers for us at least like we were having like Two or three or four thousand uh, uh, users a day on something that wasn't really heavily promoted. When they we went and actually bought, bought, and we had like this incredible low bounce rate too. Like the, that's that's like six percent is like that's insane. Uh, and and uh, the session duration uh, that's a bit low now. Um, but uh, but when we actually were were engaged, each story was like five minutes long. And that's what it was. So we had like this incredible low bounce rate, and people stuck through to the end of each each one of these stories, which were there were 42 of them that were released on sequential days. And uh, um, but what was interesting is that when we we actually they uh, uh, we got uh, uh, promoted by the Guardian, and the Guardian sort of pushed that out as as like a almost like an infomercial. And so we had like our numbers went up, and then at the same time it was Le Mans did the same thing. Up, up, up. But then, uh, bigger 
uh, that's when our bounce rate went um, went through the roof, like to like 30 percent or something like that. It's because people, um, I guess people were. It's it was just a, a different a different audience, and and you're not speaking to the uh, the converted. So I, I think also too from from I mean this this is uh, here um, well, I was going to say I'll show you here <laughs> on the small screen here you see that this this was a design decision that was made collectively it's not something that actually I approve of because uh, I mean what it is it's a, it's a manifesto and 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 you get uh, you get this thing that uh, I think is is in in the way of between what you want the person to, to do. And I think that most people, when they see sort of Leap Manifesto, it comes whatever, whatever front end, whatever front end uh, messaging there is, you already know when you get to it what it's all about. And, and I think, you know, by the time that it takes for this video to load in, or, or you to figure out what, you know, where the interface items are, I think that that's an opportunity, like I was saying before, the, you know, the more more chance, more options you give people that one option they're going to choose is bail. Sorry, did you have? Oh. Oh. I do? I yep. Can... <laughs> um, I was actually, this is totally underrated because I was raising my hand. Perfect, non linear. Um, you were talking about sustainability earlier, and I was wondering when people come to you with projects like MD, do they have a model for the long term sustainability of the project? Like, what, how will it be funded once it's already completed and you've done the work? How is bandwidth? Yeah. You have to be updating the site. How well, that I think in many cases, in, in Andy's case too, it's like a collective naivete about that as well. Because the idea too is like we're, it's like when you form a, a band, a punk rock band, you say, oh, okay, well, our problems will be over once we sign to a, a label and they'll put the record out, we'll be rich, we'll be famous. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to, you know, we won't have to work hard anymore. <laughs> and that, that part actually doesn't get. get, uh, cut, get didn't get covered off in something like After the Storm. So it's this idea that, oh, you know, the Washington Post is going to put it out. It's going to be amazing, uh, you know, the, and, and uh, looks like we made it. But that's uh, it's not the case. And that's, this is increasingly increasingly the thing that is occurring to us that, that actually you do, need, you do need that plan. You know, it's not the end plan or the exit plan, but you do need, you do need to consider the life after, uh, the life after release. And 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 the idea of outreach, like this is something we discovered with offshore was and and with after the storm, and with uh, with almost all of our projects is that we're the ones that have to do it, and, and that's time. You know, and uh, but the thing is, how do you ask people for money for that? Because this is this is the tricky part as well, and that uh, um, I mean these budgets are are still you know are still so low that that. Uh, you uh, you more or less end up doing these things for for love, not money. <laughs>